Hi everybody, I'm Mike Love. I'm the owner of Pro Steel Products in Northeast Ohio, and I want to put this video out to show you what I've been doing with this uh, big red container back here. There's been a lot of people on the internet that's had these, how to, how to put them in the ground and how you can use them as a fallout shelter, as a safety shelter, underground safety. Uh, these cannot be buried underground the way they are and I say the way they are, and how some of the people on the internet are building them. It, uh, it's not right. I mean, if you're gonna put an angle iron down the side of these and say it's safe, it's not. I'm gonna demonstrate, on, uh, uh, and I can't stress this enough. If you're looking at one of those, please watch this video. This is part one, I'm only halfway done with this one. And once you see how they're built this way, you'll know it could be safely buried underground. Now, with that said, I want to show you a little bit about how the stress points on these are built. And I, I really just threw this together in about five minutes to show you. Uh, this is actually the, the strength of these containers, the floor and the uprights. This is where it's at. If you look at the maximum capacity, 61,800 pounds, you can put right here, okay? They lift them from the top. That is your, your strength. I welded these on here to show you that they're not that strong. This is just, if you grab this in tin foil, that's what you have right here. It's 1 8 corrugated steel on the outside. Now, some say, well, why don't you just build it out of steel? Okay, I like the Core 10 steel. It has anti-corrosion properties built right into this steel. So to properly reinforce it and everything, I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second. Uh, but one thing I wanna tell you is when you're picking one of these out, you can buy a used one. Uh, they advertise watertight, uh, windproof. Uh, get one that's not really, really beat up. It doesn't matter as long as it doesn't have holes in it. I like to pick the ones out that have the sides that are bowed, okay, kind of like a sphere. It's been used, it's been pressed out, the steel's been expanded to make a little bow. The way I build these, that will actually add to the strength of the walls in these containers. Now, uh, <clears throat> these weigh 5,400 pounds. The steel I'm putting inside these is going to more than double the weight of this container. Now. Okay, I'm back. I had to stop the video for a minute. I lost my train of thought. But anyway, uh, the amount of steel I put in there and how these, uh, the strength of this right here is what I'm talking about. And after you see, we're going to go in here in a second. Uh, bear with me. But uh, this will actually be inverted, okay, because the strength is here. I want the ground up here uh, to protect me in here. Okay, we're going to put a new floor down here. We're going to put a new uh, roof on it on the bottom because that actually is not waterproof. It's got a lot of heavy beams and everything in it. We're going to cover up with another piece of steel and, and weld it solid so it has no leakage whatsoever. Uh, all your strength is going to be here. After I bury these, I can pull the excavator that dug the hole right on top. Somebody inside and they will not know it's there. They may feel a little vibration, but they aren't going to know it's there. Strong, safety. These others on the internet, I wouldn't put my family in it because that's going to be their casket. It's not going to last. These are built to last. With that said, let's take a look inside and see what we got going on. Okay, everybody, we have the doors open, and we're about to enter the back of the, or the front, I should say, by the back doors. Uh, if you notice, there's only a, a couple feet, and you have a wall with an opening. This is the first doorway. Okay, now keep in mind, remember I said the floor is going to be the ceiling because we haven't inverted this one yet. So the actual hatch is going to be up above. And this is going to be a hatch area where you come down into it from the ground. It's designed to be buried a couple feet deep. Uh, once you come down, the one side is uh, going to be uh, uh, shelving here. You're going to have a generator, your battery powers. Uh, most of this is going to be run by 12 volt. Uh, 
and uh, the generator is going to charge it and give you 110 when you need it. Uh, I do recommend a diesel uh, just because diesel fuel is going to be readily available. There's a lot of trucks out there that have uh, diesel tanks that hold about 300 gallons. So while everybody's out trying to get gas, you can, uh, you can go out and get diesel fuel. But I put a light in here because I don't have it wired yet. Like I said, we got to flip it over. But this wall, if you can see, is quarter inch on this side, eighth inch on this side, with the structural steel. The four inch structural steel is the same I made this, this uh, floor uh, demonstration with. Uh, it, it's real heavy stuff, seven, over seven pounds a foot. So it's good heavy material. Now, when you do this, it's, it's building a wall in there, it, it's not gonna crush this way or this way, in or out. I mean, it's gonna hold everything structurally sound. All right, you have your beams across here, and I'm gonna try and, uh, you know, there, this is actually kind of be the living area, okay? Uh, you have your defensive wall. There's going to be actual gun ports. I do have a defense system that I build into all these. You'll have ports there, just like an armored car. That'll have, uh, uh, you know, shooting holes, IEDs on the outside, flamethrowers, etc. That's. I'll get into that on part two or part three. It depends on how many parts I come up with. But anyway, you're building a rib cage on the inside. Don't put anything on the outside because it does, isn't as strong. When this wall actually closes in on this, that's as far as it's going to go. I mean, this whole area behind this is going to be pushing out. Just like in the human body, you have a rib cage. That's what this is. It's a whole rib cage that is not going to go anywhere. So now you come to another wall. Okay, this has the same structural steel on end to make it real strong. Okay and it's welded in solid with your beams on the side. Now I'm gonna try and probably have to bring the light in here for you. Let me get out that real quick. But now you come into the storage area. This is the back of it. There's another room. Uh, you can see how this structural steel is up and up on the top on end, which it's gonna hold the weight of anything you wanna put in here. You have the sides. To hold the sides out. The back wall has two uh, beams running across. That opening is actually going to be up here and that's going to be an escape hatch. Every time you have a hatch you must have an escape route. You have to have it. So when you build these use the heavy structural steel just build a rib cage. Just keep that in mind. That's how you have to do it. Now, the floor up here is actually going to have a brand new floor right on top of that with plate steel. Uh, so it's actually going to be double walled on the floor. And like I said, the bottom part here, that's going to be your ceiling. I'm going to leave the wood in there. And again, I don't want to put anything that collects moisture. This wood's going to be sealed. So, uh, Moisture is bad. You're going to get moisture in here and uh, it's from sweating. It's going to be humidity. You're going to have air pipes. Uh, if it's humid outside, you are going to uh, experience a little bit of sweating in it. So I don't want anything that's going to collect moisture because if it's a year or so and you go to use it and you're going to be all molded up with uh, your wooden cabinets or whatever you want to put in here, don't do it. This is a survival situation. This isn't a camper, so don't overdo it on your build. Hopefully you'll never need it, but the way things are going, <laughs> you might. And this is the insurance policy. Once you get this in and you have all your stuff there inside locked up and you know you can put your family in here and be safe, that's, that's when you're going to be at ease. So this is part one. I hope you liked it. Uh, we're going to get this thing rolled over here pretty soon and continue to build. When it's finished, you'll agree that this is, this is the best built underground shipping container that you can buy. So uh, stay tuned for part two. Subscribe to this channel. That way you'll know when part two comes out and you can 
uh, follow the build. And uh, like I said, if you need to rewind this, uh, build it this way. You have to build your structure from the inside to hold everything out. If you put a couple of I-beams on the outside or angle iron, please don't do it. Uh, you're you're going to be one of the hundreds or thousands of people that tried this and uh, actually cannot. It's going to be a failure. It's not going to be on the Internet because you're going to be embarrassed to put it on there. So uh, please subscribe. I'll get it on there as quick as I can. I'll put my email on the screen there so you can email me, ask me questions, whatever you want to do. Uh, the email is prosteelproducts at gmail.com. Uh, so thanks for watching and stay tuned for part two.